Uh, thank you very much, Tan, for having me and for inviting me and for organizing this great seminar. And I was very impressed, even though you saw me going outside, but I looked, had a look at the books and this very impressive uh, work. And I've been following um, the work here, especially for the last three years, um, since I invited uh, Stan uh, to present. Uh, at that time, it was a uh, much, much younger program, much, much less developed than it was now, uh, the Chesson Schools program here. It was a very, very nice uh, presentation in Vienna, and uh, so we kept in touch. Um, I'm probably speaking a little bit too fast so far, um, so I try to be a bit slower now. And uh, I want you to understand what I'm saying. So if you have a question, then is please just Make, 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 make me understand you have a question and then, then I, I, I want you to ask a question rather than wait until the end. Um, what I will do is I will take you uh, through some websites. Um, so I have not another PowerPoint presentation with me, but I will show you some websites um, with resources that could be useful for you. and. Um, I will show you a little movie later on, always a nice <laughs> change. Um, um, all of the links that you will see uh, in the presentation and a few more which I'm skipping today uh, will be provided to you by Stan by email together with my contact information in case you want. Can I interrupt you? Rozumiecie po anglicki? Veľmi málo. Veľmi málo. Dobre, tak ja vždy tak počasne I will provide some, some uh, translation by, by part. Uh, zatiaľ sme hovorili o tom, že Stefan ma pozval v roku 2012 do Viedne na prezentáciu slovenského projektu Šach na školách. Bol sa moja prvá prezentácia v angličtine, tak som bol dostal vyklepaný, ale dopadlo to celkom dobre. A medzi tým vlastne ten, celý ten vývoj toho projektu však na škola nie len na Slovensku, ale aj v Európe sa veľmi posunul dopredu. Pracujú na tom mnohé krajiny, niektoré intenzívnejšie, niektoré menej, ale ten pokrok je dosť veľký. A Stefan by vám chcel cez nejaké webové stránky ukázať, ako sa to v zahraničí pohlo ďalej. Yeah, um, I want to know a little bit more about you. And so I want you to lift your hand now. Uh, if you are currently or before a tournament chess player, are you a club and tournament chess player? Please lift your hand. Okay. Um, please lift your hand if you're a teacher, a regular teacher or an educator uh, by, by profession. Uh, if you're a teacher in school, please lift your hand. Okay. Okay. Or a former teacher, that's also good. Um, so, um, please lift your hand now if you are a chess teacher, um, bringing, if you, if you do um, go to schools, teach children chess on a regular basis, not as part of your maybe teaching in the morning, but something additional after school chess. Who is doing this? Quite a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> um, <coughs> let me make one observation. Um, in uh, the, when we meet and talk about school chess in Germany, most of the people who attend are teachers. A majority here. It seems to be fewer. But of course, the teachers, they want to enjoy their weekend. And we have here those who are really motivated to bring chess, the children to bring chess into schools. And I appreciate you uh, coming, uh, all coming here today. Um, I want
want to say a few things about myself. I used to be a tournament player quite on an okay level, and uh, I've been a journalist writing for the newspaper, <coughs> recording for the radio for many, many years. Um, my, I basically started in 1990. There was a major world championship match, Kasparov Cup at the time, and it was my first real job as a journalist. Um, and I, I was also a journalist, not for chess only, but also for science and medicine. So that's my profession. But, Can I yeah, sure. Try? No, don't, 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 don't do everything, just very yeah. briefly. Takže Stefan hovorí o sebe ako o svojich začiatkoch, dajme tomu, že robil novinára od roku 1990, kedy sa hral posledný zápas medzi Karpovom a Kasparovom a robí novinára šachového, ale aj novinára takého, a to taký anglický výraz, že freelance na voľnej nohe, takže píše aj o vede, o, o, o medicíne. And a couple of years ago, because journalism is a very difficult profession, very difficult. A lot of people want to be a journalist. And so I, I started something new, I wanted to do something new. And five years ago I started in Vienna an organization that is bringing chess to primary schools, so to young children, six, seven, eight, nine years old, um, primary schools, and the chess teachers, they were nearly all of them future teachers. That means students who study to become teachers. Um, there were also a few tournament players who also had good experience with children, and uh, we call it Spielen Schlauer. And but we all, not only organize after school chess in the in always in the school, not not in some private place or in a club, um, always in the school. We also did some more. We wanted to bring across the message that the best time for children to profit to benefit from chess is age seven, eight, nine, is the age when they are in primary school. Because at school chess in Austria, five years ago, was mainly gymnasium, mainly secondary school, some elementary school, but mainly, mainly the secondary school. So what we did to convey this message, to bring this message out to the public, was to organize um, some public event uh, and uh, also to get publicity but also to uh, to tell the chess players about it hey you want to have do school chess start it earlier of course when you do it in secondary school maybe more kids will come to the club but in primary school they benefit much more you can reach many more children and it's more legitimate break probably too Takže v tejto časti hovoril Stefan o tom, že v minulosti v Rakúsku aj v Nemecku tam je vlastne taký trocha iný systém školstva, že majú základnú školu len po štvrtý ročník a potom je stredná škola. Hej, majú tie e, gymnázia 10 ročné, alebo teda 8 ročné. Vlastne u nás momentálne tiež je taký duálny systém, že sú tie 8 ročné gymnázia. Takže základná škola je vlastne len po štvrtú triedu a e, tam tí väčšinou šachisti, čo viedli sú tie deti, tak sa sústredovali až na deti vlastne na tom gymnáziu a s nich sa snažili vychovať tých šachistov, ale približne pred tými 4-5 rokmi nastal taká, taká premena práve vďaka tomuto projektu šach na školách, že sa vlastne začali sústreďovať na tie deti, ktoré chodia na základnú školu, čiže ten vek 6 až 10 a snažia sa to posilňovať rôznymi verejnými súťažami na námestiach. Boli veľmi pekné fotky uh, with, with chessmen, photos and, and uh, 
že robia vlastne tak, ako keby šach vonku. Nie je budova, ale v otvorenom priestranstve, aby bol na očiach, aby tie deti ako cítili to, že ľudia okolo nich žijú, že ich nikto vzíluje. We, we, we work on the image of, of chess, because for children and for parents, see chess <coughs> tournaments and children who are just concentrating fighting with each other, okay, it, it, it is interesting for some, but to make it lively, so that, they, that, that, you, that you show a lot of children having different activities with chess, interacting with each other actively, not just like this and then focusing on the chess pieces, but uh, much more than that. And also the chess men, and also this was, this was our idea. And also to show a lot of girls playing chess. <coughs> We have this problem of everywhere that more boys than girls are, are um, interested or are engaged. And so what we did was we uh, invited a well-known player um, that was in the first year, it was Anish Kiri. I was rising at the time, now he's maybe number eight in the world or something. And in the second year we had uh, Vesko Kopalov, former world champion. And they, that was not so interesting for the children, but that was for publicity. And for the chess people, they were then connecting with it. And when we had Veselin Kopalov, we invited eight very strong junior players, not, not only from Austria, also from Slovakia, from Czech Republic, from Hungary, to play with him. So we have, we reach out to, to the other countries a little bit. And uh, we did this in a very nice place in Vienna. Um, and outside, there was a nice park, and the children were playing all kinds of activities with chess. Of course, there's always, the, it's always some chess with the clock that's very interesting. But there were other activities. Um, too. And uh, on that occasion, we also organized a seminar, international seminar. Uh, I've already mentioned Stan was coming from, from Slovakia. Uh, we had experts from eight countries. Janusz was also there as first. Uh, that's where we met first. Um, and uh, it was. Uh, and why, we, why did we do a seminar at the time? Because just before the European Parliament had agreed uh, with a majority to support the introduction of chess in the education system. So I had a very strategic idea, bring together the people who are active in their countries and talk now, what can we do now? We have political support, only political support. There was no, the EU did not say we spend 10 billion on this. No money was involved at the time. But, so we had to, to translate political support from the European Parliament, not the worst, <laughs> um, to uh, get actual support in our countries, to get resources, and um, it was quite, quite, uh, quite a good meeting. For me personally, it was very ambivalent. Uh, after that meeting, I got problems in Austria with uh, some chess officials. They didn't like that I took the initiative and not somebody of them. Um, but on the other hand, one of the people who are invited to uh, Vienna, um, one year later, asked me, Stefan, please help us. We want to do a big conference on chess in schools. It was the London, education, uh, London Chess and Education Conference that started in December 2013. And there was a, there was a fantastic, there's a fantastic organization in, in England um, that has been raising a lot of money from private sponsors to bring chess into schools. Um, in England, chess is in many schools already. Yeah, that's a bit. Okay. That's uh, all well, well, taká konferencia, ktorej som sa aj ja zúčastnil, aj teda Stefan ju organizoval, bol tam aj pán Palagi. Popri tom sa hral simultánny zápas s Veselinom Topalovom, kde vlastne sa kvalifikoval 
za Slovensko Juro Druska, ktorý vyhral vtedy majstrovstva Slovenska do 16 rokov. Dokonca revizoval s ním. Konalo sa to v Albertine, čo je významná obraza, len svetová určite a teda veľeckých diel v centre Viedne. A ten zápas tam hralo 8 hráčov, bolo to také komorné, skutočne akože také profesionálne šachové, ale pred tým múzeom boli stánky, kde deti hrali šachy medzi sebou, boli tam vedúci, hrali s nimi a teda bol tam aj tá postavička Chessman, čo je niečo ako Spiderman, ale má šachový hosty, niekde určite budete vidieť fotku, alebo ja som ju teda už dával aj k nám na web. Tak prekvapivo, tá konferencia bola podľa mňa veľmi úspešná, bolo to skutočne veľmi dobre zorganizované, ale rakúsky šachový zväz sa k tomu postavil. Tak odmietavo. Nechcel v tom nejak sa ďalej angažovať, ale Stefan si urobil dobré meno a asi rok na to dostal pozvanie robiť konferenciu v Londýne, ktorú som tu ráno spomínal. Robila sa v roku 2013, kedy tam bola Niki Varvuláková a bola aj minulý rok, ale teda bez našej účasti, ale snažili sme sa tam niekoho poslať, ale bolo to tak na... Nikto sa neprihlásil. Boli tam účastný Huba aj Kľúčková. Áno, Martin Huba bol zde. Ja, v druhom konferenci, ktorú sme mali vlast december. A v druhom konferenci sme mali fokus. To bolo o čase a matematiky. A viem, že neskôr sa mali veľmi zaujímavú prezentáciu a ja sa vám 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 Another news was we created a website, um, which is actually on, uh, and this has a lot of resources. And I, I really suggest uh, to you, if, if you can read English well, have a look at the uh, presentations page and see <coughs> if any of these presentations is useful for you. Um, I'm skipping now. I have a few other. There's a few other pages from major conferences on chess in schools that are also very useful um, uh, because there you have 20, 30 presentations uh, sometimes. So there was this conference by organized together with FIDE last year in Armenia. There was two conference, there were two conferences in Italy, in Torino. Uh, there was a major <coughs> conference in Aberdeen and one in Dallas in the United States. And uh, maybe I, I missed one now, but uh, what I wanted to say is All these conferences, there's a lot of resources, a lot of interesting things can still be found on the conference websites. And um, some other resources uh, here are, there's a website, I, I wonder if anybody has seen it yet. Um, Takže uh, v svete sa koná v poslednom čase veľmi veľa takýchto konferencií. Bola konferencia v Jerevanie, bola konferencia v v Taliansku dokonca dve a aj v Amerike. A na stránkach týchto konferencií vždy sú nejaké prezentácie a môžete si ich kedykoľvek pozrieť, stiahnuť, využívať tieto zdroje. Kto má vzal tento website? Kto má vzal tento website? Kto má vzal tento website? Kto má vzal tento? I saw it because there is just a fan. I think they do it yes, somehow. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is a new book. This is a, an edition of uh, chesscafe.com. They relaunched and they also have a new business model. But what they did is they, they looked up a lot of interesting um, publications, things that are available already, or they asked some scientists, can we put it on the web here for free for everyone? So there's a list of goes down there's like 30 or 40 uh, presentations. Um, 
again, you will get the links to these so websites. This one by is quite interesting, there is curriculum. Mm -hmm. And uh, je tam vlastne osnova rok po roku, čo má šatista, teda čo má vedieť každý rok. Hej. So oni to vlastne riešia aj také opasky, čo dostávajú judisti, že ako ten základ je tiež modrý, potom hnedý, fialový, biely a tak ďalej. Čiže každý rok to dieťa má aby dostalo ten opasok splniť nejaké, nejaké vlastne čo sa má po tom roku naučiť. A tam je to rok po roku, myslím, že asi 6 rokov je tam až pomaly do majstrovskej úrovne. And um, what's very important about the London Chess and Education Conference, this is not about present, presenting how great see the, the organization behind it, the chess and schools and communities is. Actually, they are keeping a low profile at their own conference. So they are not using the conference to, to suggest or to, to sell it to, to the other people. They have a diff the approach is a different one. The main goal uh, at this conference, uh, uh, the main, uh, the main uh, message and the main purpose is cooperation. Bringing people together from different countries to really cooperate, to start projects together, to learn from each other. And I'm stressing this and I'm very proud of this uh, because in the past, in many places, the international uh, conferences was like, we are doing this and very often this, we are quite good. Mm, but we also have to talk about what's not working so well. And we also have to talk, what can we do together? What can we do together? And so in a conference, and I've gone to many conferences as a journalist, very often what's more important is not what is presented, but what you talk in the break, the coffee break, in the lunch break, all the way, or going for a beer afterwards, starting some work together. This is very important, and this is why at the London Conference there is an official program. But there is also a lot of side meetings, bringing people together to talk about what can we do uh, using online, using new technology, or some other side meeting uh, was on what can we do in special education, chess interventions for, for children with ADHD who cannot sit still, who have, who have problems to concentrate. A lot of these side meetings, or bringing <coughs> scientists together, doing a special meeting like that. Um, I'm stressing this because uh, always as an organizer, you put too much official program and not enough time for the people to connect. Because that's, that's what, what, what makes things happen. Um, and one thing that happened at the London conference was uh, to bring together some projects. Uh, some projects to use the opportunities uh, to, that, that are new now. But maybe Stan, you can uh, sum it up. Skúsim teda preložiť to, to zase to podstatné, čo som zachytil. Tieto uh, konferencie samozrejme majú nejaký oficiálny program, ale je to aj o tom, a možno viac o tom, že tí ľudia sa stretnú, a spolu komunikujú, riešia veci, ktoré sa týkajú oboch strán a snažia sa vlastne nájsť spoločnú aktivitu, na ktorej by sa mohli podielať obe strany. A musím povedať, že toto na Slovensku nám troška nefunguje, lebo ja viem, že sa veľa robí v každom tom regióne, ale nemáme nejaké až také dobré idei, ktoré by sme mohli robiť spoločne. Tak možno, že dnes je dobrý, dobrý deň na to, aby sme našli nejaké tie možnosti, ako by tie školy mohli spolupracovať medzi sebou viacej. A 
Erasmus je o tom, je tam ten program Edwini, že z školy sa mu nájdu partnerskú školu a buď sa naštevujú priamo, alebo dokon... Však je taký šport, že ho môžu hrať cez internet, stačí sa len dohodnúť. Ja som niekoľkokrát hovoril tu, že bol by fajn, keby sme konečne dokázali si zahrať šach dve školy proti sebe na internete. Nie je to nič zložité, len sa dohodnúť, pretože tie technické možnosti už sú také, že máme spojenie non-stop. So, what you are seeing here was before there was the Erasmus Plus website, so all this information on on the funding possibilities there is available in every language of the European Union. So you have your own office in Bratislava that is helping you. And um, this page that I'm showing now, the e-twinning page, is especially for schools and for teachers. So if you are a teacher or if you are in a school that wants to, that, that thinks about, hey, we could maybe do an international cooperation. Register there, hurry, do it. And when you when you ask what you're doing in your profile, write the profile, that paragraph you will have to write in English. So that when somebody is searching you, you write in English the word chess. You will be found. Somebody will find and you can also search others who are doing chess. And then you look at the profile and you find out about them. This is actually how one uh, Erasmus uh, project has come about. There was a very smart Hungarian guy in Northern Ireland, Bolos Kecskemet, and he, is, he, he found schools like this. He registered himself and then he looked which school is mentioning chess and then he contacted them and he was successful. He, he, he made a very uh, successful application for uh, bringing together some schools that are using chess. Um, and uh, this year he did another project application. So good luck for him, and uh, I hope that he will succeed because this is uh, this is uh, this is an opportunity. Um, unfortunately, this way is not working for chess clubs or chess federation uh, because um, the, the, the the there's two types of um, funding really here. This is one that is really only for schools. So schools working together and the chess experts helping them, but um, that's easier to get funding there. Um, there's probably more, more budgeted for this kind of uh, um, project. The other one is strategic partnerships between organizations that develop education and schools and school authorities, but that's a bit more difficult to get. There's more competition for uh, that kind of project, but that is a project type that is also possible for a chess federation to be involved. And one such project has, uh, has come up, um, and I'm telling you about this uh, project a little bit more uh, in, a, in a minute. Stan, I was just telling about the difference between uh, projects for schools only, which are easier to get funding and also easier to manage. And you don't have to write such a big application versus um, uh, partnerships that are also involving chess organizations or other non-profit organizations. So that's more difficult. And I'm going to suggest, uh, I'm, I'm going to present one. Ten Edwinning je vlastne určený pre partnerstvo škôl. Keď by tam chceli nejaké iné organizácie, napríklad športový zver a šatisti, tak e, sú tam nejaké možnosti, ale je to veľa komplikovanejšie. Zkrátka ten, ten e, e, Edwinning, to je vlastne z EU, ide na to idú peniaze, tak je to určené primárne pre školy, ktoré chcú medzi sebou robiť nejaké aktivity, takže Práve preto je vhodné, aby tie školy medzi sebou sa dohodli. A... Môžem ukázať? Môžem ukázať? Môžem ukázať? Môžem 
Uh, but are you are you owned by the state? Are you uh, are you not uh, an organization, a private organization, non-profit, or are you owned by the state? Okay. Maybe maybe you could be a partner in a schools only project. Maybe I have I'm not sure because it's it's not formal education. I'm not sure. It's a detailed question. We can. Tato, ten teraz možná na slovenské stránku a potom vám poviem, ako dávam link. Tam sú detaily, že čo, kto je oprávnený podávať tú žiadosť a aký je postup. So I want to show you briefly one one such project of a partnership, not just schools, but organizations that are developing chess for education uh, and I, I, this project actually started in the London conference because this is where the first contacts were made um, and uh, there's a great guy in Italy Alessandro Dominici who has been working a lot a lot a lot and is very good at bringing pro making projects in Italy and now he started this it's it's actually this his project I'm also involved but Alessandro is the real uh, master mind of it and what we are doing uh, in this project and uh, this the website is not uh, finished yet so um, this is not uh, so it's informative there but what we are doing there is we are developing a chess curriculum for primary schools that is going over three school years three school years like approximately one hour of chess per week but the special idea of it, this is not a curriculum for which you need chess experts to teach the children. This curriculum is especially named for schools that have no chess background, for teachers who know the rules but not much more than that, or maybe only the rules that they have played 20 years ago. But we are doing it in a way so that teachers don't feel afraid to, don't feel scared about chess. Oh, chess is only for the masters, you have to be really good to teach others. No, so the teachers can grow together with the children and just a little bit of an advantage uh, is enough. Um, and uh, so this, this is, uh, uh, and this is coming out of some assets that are there in Italy, which I'm telling you after the translation was done. Okay. Stefan teraz hovoril o projekte CASO, ktorý to je skrátka to, co je čas. A potom ešte každé písmeno má nejaký význam. Je tam learning a education. Má to vlastnú webku, hej, čiže nie je problém. Vedúcim toho projektu je Talian Alessandro Dominici, on je z Turína a je veľmi aktívny, je to... Um, vlastne oni tam majú kontakty na Turínsku univerzitu a robia dosť veľký výskum na školách, kde sa však učí. Ale vlastne ten projekt je postavený veľmi podobne ako ten náš, že snažia sa, aby však učili učiteľia, ktorí nemusia byť nejakí výkonní šachisti, stačí, keď ovládajú základy, učia ho 3 roky, je približne jednu hodinu týždenne a je to vlastne, smyslom je ani nie tak nejako vychovávať šachistov, alebo ale zase tým deťom pomáhať v učení a že v školách je často odpor k šachu v tom, že učiteľia sa cítia nedostatočne kvalifikovaní na to, aby učili šach, ale tieto veci sú tak jednoduché, že to zvládne, zvládne hociaký učiteľ, ktorý učí na prvom stupni. So what you're seeing here is a chess website 
a very simple one. It looks, still looks like five or ten years ago. It's very simple um, for children. Um, and this is a cat that is inviting the children to come to its house. It's a chess house. It has different rooms where you can do different things. You can play, you can learn, or you can also sit some tests because you want to win a cup. Huh? You want to, uh, uh, and in the game room, you can also meet other children who play chess, uh, maybe from far away, uh, because they have quite a lot of children in India now registered for that age. And um, this has been developed in Italy many years ago. You can still see it's a bit old, but uh, we are using it in the project. We are translating it, improving it, and extending it, because at the moment it's only for beginners. But then the next version will already be for children who, who, start to, who like to play chess and who want to learn to play chess a little bit better. It's a different approach from what uh, Janosch is showing later on. It's very playful and uh, it's not for the smartphone. You need a computer. Um, we are using this also uh, because it connects completely uh, what you do in the school. There's teaching materials that is completely in parallel with, uh, with what is used there. So actually the cat is talking and uh, in the initial page there was, you see there's already a German version and an English version and a Spanish version uh, and you can, you can, you can go. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, uh, you write me an email if you want to see more of it, because then I can create a password for you, and you can enter. Without the password, you can see only the initial page. Um, <laughs> vlastne to vyvinuli Italiáni, ale stále to používajú a snažia sa to nejako rozširovať. Budeme mať niečo podobné po obede, keď nám pán Pavlaky bude prezentovať svoj server, ktorý je asi modernejší. Interesting, and that we were very keen in Germany and in Spain to get. There was one the big motivation for us to enter the project suggested um, to us by Alessandro Dolinici is what you are seeing here. You are seeing a training for teachers with chess, but they are not using chess boards. They are using a giant. 4x4 four four meter chess board and the teachers are now making some games, some movements um, that later on the children will do. And some of it is pretty fast paced, some of it is more like, hey, how am I moving, how am I orienting myself on this board? Uh, actually, yeah, you, now you see some things, uh, I use some uh, additional equipment is being used. So this is often done in the gym in the school, in the, uh, where they otherwise have the physical education, the sport. Um, and so what the children are learning is, hey, um, to tell another, if you want to go to a certain square, go three steps straight and then you go in vertical two steps to the right or some, something like this um, and the children, and we are talking children who are six years old they can do it and after a little while they start to use the coordinates go to E5, oh that's much easier than saying oh, go first go five steps to the right and then go five steps straight um, 
Oh, E5, yeah, it's obvious. Now I know this. The children are learning these things very quickly. But then there's also a lot of things like, yeah, here you see that they are expressing themselves. Um, there's a little bit of uh, interaction, dancing involved. Um, we have started in the project to use this in German schools. We have uh, translated the materials, we have adjusted the materials from Italy. And so far, we have five schools in Germany who are doing that. And they're all very happy with this. Um, because uh, none of the, uh, a few of the teachers, they are very good with chess. But most of the teachers in the project are, are new to chess. OK, they know the rules, maybe as children. But this thing is, they, they, they know, they can do it. They know the children. They know how to empower the children. And uh, so it's, 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 uh, it's quite a nice, uh, okay, this is the second part. This is the same teachers that are also getting some uh, training for you, teaching chess on the board. But that's nothing unique about the project. Uh, the first part of the psychomotricity was what I wanted to show you. Okay. Uh, that's Alessandro, actually. Alessandro Minici. Okay, it's gone. <coughs> Takže vlastne ste videli, ako prebieha výučka dva učiteľov na tak, takto vlastne oni školia učiteľov, že tancujú po šatovnici, hej? Aby sa naučili tie pohybí figúr, hej, robia tam rôzne tie skoky a výbu sa ako figúry, hej, a popri tom možno to vyzerá ako výuka v tej škole ale je to veľmi prístupné tým učiteľom, necítia sa ako, že by sa niečo museli naučiť, ale je to aj pre nich veľká zábava a má to veľký úspech nielen v Taliansku, ale aj v Nemecku. Vlastne to je spolupracujúca krajina na tomto projekte. Ja, 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 that's 10 lessons or maybe 15 lessons for the children. And after that, they are playing chess on the board. And because they have already moved like the chess pieces without calling it chess, they learn chess in one or two lessons or three lessons. Very quickly they learn the rules. And they also think, this is nice and this is coming together. And um, at the end, I wanted to show you one other person to watch out for. This is Jesper Hall who spoke out for cooperation, and uh, I'm showing him, he is the head of uh, the new Chess in Education Commission of the European Chess Union, of the Federation of the National Federations. Uh, this is a fantastic development. Jesper is a, is a great man, and he will bring about a lot of good things in the future. I'm, 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 uh, because he has no power agenda. He is not a Kasparov who is using chess to uh, promote him, his own agenda uh, or his power struggle. He's not a Kirsan Ilyushinov, who is also, ah, in the last couple of years, when Kasparov uh, got chess into chess, okay, also Fide <coughs> was doing a more and, and, and pushing it more. No, he's, he's brought about a miracle in Sweden by, he has himself trained about 1,500, 1,500 teachers to teach chess and chess, there was, chess was in a very few schools on a regular basis in Sweden 10 years ago. There was only one big thing, a competition for children to play chess in the fourth grade. But now chess is on a regular basis in, a, in about a third of the primary schools in Sweden and probably still growing uh, thanks to Jesper and now he's connecting the European effort. He is a champion of cooperation. We are working together closely. And I'm also mentioning uh, Martin Hooper uh, is also working together with Jesper and is, is supporting this. Um, so thanks. We are coming back to Slovakia here. Thanks a lot uh, for, for listening. And uh, again, I will send through Stan, I will send you all the links so you can look up uh, or pass on the resources uh, to others. Thank you. Ešte na záver, na obrázku Jesper Hall zo Švédska. Stal sa nedávno vedúcim komisie 
ktoré štát na školách v Európskej šatovej únii. Je to vlastne člen výboru v Európskej šatovej únie. Okrem iného je tam aj Martin Huba, ktorý je zase pokladníkom. No a on je zo Švedska a vo Švedsku tiež pred pár rokmi jediné, čo ako tak fungovalo, bola nejaká súťaž žiakov medzi školami a za približne 5 rokov on sa podielal na tom, že vyškodil asi 15 tisíc učiteľov však. A už sa však svojím spôsobom učí, alebo teda je na jednej tretine švedských škôl. Takže týmto by som chcel poďakovať Stefanovi za to, že prišiel a povedal nám novinky, čo sa deje tu za hranicami blízko aj ďalej.